There are people everywhere. Mm -hmm. Just continue talking to me, telling me the story. Connect. Holding someone's hand. You're holding someone's hand. Okay. I'm actually holding two people's hands, one on each side. Mm -hmm. One as a child, one as a man. How do you feel in this space that you're in? Overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed. Why do you think you're feeling overwhelmed? Uh, we're running late. You're running late. Mm -hmm. Do you get a sense that you are you you you're walking? Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. walking. Okay. All right. Just take notice of where you are. Tell me about this scene. What do you see? Lines of people. There's a huge ship. And I think we're trying to get on it. There's lines of people. And there's a huge ship. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? My daughter is young. And I'm worried about losing her in the crowd. Are you carrying anything with you? No, my hands are occupied. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other hand. Yeah. And how old is the child? What does that uh, Three or four, maybe five. Okay. We're just following people in line. Mm hmm Start checking people's hair. Our lives. For lice, I see. Do you sense that you're wearing a hat? Yes. You are. What does it look like? It's purple with feathers. Mm -hmm. But it's not expensive. What does your dress look like? A blue sleeves and tight bodice. Poofy skirts. Kind of a cream color. It doesn't look expensive either. Okay. okay. Very good. It's our turn to get on the ship. It's your turn. Mm -hmm. So, what does that look like? What's the process Walking like? Cross the bridge. Okay. Getting our hair checked, and my okay. husband's getting his beard checked, and then they let us on. Tell me how what the um, boat appears like from your perspective. Describe it to me. It's fancy. It's new. You can smell the fresh paint. It's the nicest place I've ever been. Okay. We have to find our room. Lots of big, long, white hallways with doors on both sides. Is there carpeting? Yeah. What color is it? Red. It's red. Mm -hmm. We're on the stairs going down, and there's no carpeting on the stairs. There's no carpet on the stairs. Okay. We found our room. It's bunk beds. It's all white. White bunk beds. My daughter asked if she can sleep on the top. She does. We tell her no. She's sleeping. With me, in my bed with me. My husband's on top, and there are two people we don't know in the other side of front beds. So you're sharing a room? Yeah. Did you happen to notice the room number as you walked in? No. Have you met your roommates yet? Yeah. Who are they? The single men from. It sounds like Italy. Okay. They don't speak English. Right. So let's move ahead. When you leave your room, do you go to explore this boat, this ship? There's a beautiful deck outside. The breeze is crisp and 
it would blow my hat off if I didn't have it pinned on. What else? There are people sitting in chairs. Sitting in chairs. And see the back of the ship. The rail doesn't go very high. And I'm glad that my daughter is so small. Okay. And isn't a climber. Okay. I'm confused because I'm seeing fire. You are. Where? Where are you seeing fire? Just in front of me, like a doorway of fire. Okay. Okay. Let's just explore this. And just take a breath. Removing any discomfort. You're safe. You're here with me. And you're just observing. But you can talk about it. So where are you? I'm on a green field. Okay. Picking plants. I don't know how I got here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Collecting the plants. Where's the fire? I don't see it anymore. Okay. So why are you collecting the plants? I use them to treat illness. You do? What do the plants look like? Do you recognize them? There are some flowers, a lot of green plants. Mm -hmm. I don't know their names offhand. Okay. But I should. All right. So where do you go? Where do you take these plants? Back home. Okay. Let's go to what you call home. Allow yourself to be there. Streets are made out of dirt. It's a beautiful, sunny day. Sky is blue. Mm -hmm. I have the plants I collected in my apron pocket. Mm -hmm. And I go into my home. It's small, made of stone. Made of stone, okay. I go inside and there are vials and mixtures and tinctures on shelves. And my bed is in a loft upstairs. Okay. You get to by climbing the ladder. There's a bell on my door. There's a bell. Mm -hmm. I can hear when it opens. Mm -hmm. Do you get visitors? Yes. Why? Why do people come to see you? For my remedy. Your remedies. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I'm pressing the plants. To make more tinctures. Mm -hmm. I put some into the mortar. Grind it up with the pestle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I add some other things. Mugwort. What else? A door bell ring. Okay. It's another woman coming in. Mm -hmm. What does she look like? She has red hair, freckles, it's curly, dark brown eyes. She says she's pregnant, but she can't be because her husband will know it's not his. I help women. I you give her it? a vial of something. Okay. And she leaves me a loaf of bread in a basket. She cries. When I speak, I sound Irish. Okay. What do you look like? Just kind of float above and look down at yourself. Describe yourself to me. Dark curly hair. Mm -hmm. Bright blue eyes. I'm tall. Mm -hmm. I have a birthmark on my back. It's brown in between my shoulder blades. Okay. I'm wearing what I think was probably once a white apron. Okay. But it's been used and loved and it's no longer white. Mm -hmm. Tied around my waist. I start to fall. Very good. Let's go ahead and move into this life that we are seeing right now. To an important day. Tell me what is happening. I'm sitting in a courtroom. I'm the defendant. 
I'm being accused of witchcraft. Okay. I'm very pure. I'm Let trying me. to explain that I'm just using yes. plants of the earth and that I would never harm anybody. But the priest is accusing me of poisoning people. I would never do that. You would never do that. I only want to help people. Of course. Can you describe the courtroom to me? The size, the people that are there? It's small, but it's packed in tight. There are people in shoes. The judge in a wig at the front. And I'm in a box on the side. You're in a box. It's not a full box, just a seated box. Okay. Are you the only defendant? Yes. Mm -hmm. About how old do you feel? 28, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see my husband. He's a businessman. And he looks terrified. Yes. But he won't stand up for me. I don't have anybody. Okay. Can you see your husband clearly? Mm -hmm. Look into his eyes if you recognize him as someone in your current life. Listen for the answer. My mom. Your mom. Okay. What happens next? I'm found guilty. Mm -hmm. Sentence to death by fire tomorrow. Tomorrow. And I'm going to ask you if you, if it's important for you to observe this as the observer, you can. It's your choice. As an observer, you can float above it and watch it. Is that something that you would like to do? I'm not sure if I want to watch that. We don't have to. Is there anything else looking back at this lifetime that you need to learn and understand? I feel alone in life a lot. I think this is where it's coming from. I couldn't have kids. Okay. My husband hated me for that. Okay. I've had five miscarriages in this lifetime. And I always assumed my husband put that on me, even though he never did. I think that's where it's coming from. All right, let's go ahead and leave that lifetime. We're letting go of all of that, any fears. We're letting it all go and leaving it in the past where it belongs. And now I'd like for you to move back to the ship. Allow your mind to move to that time, that place. When you're back on the ship with your husband and your little girl, just be there now. Tell me what you see. I'm lying in bed with a white nightgown and a sleeping cap on. My daughter is asleep next to me. Okay. I can hear my husband snoring above me. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other men in our cabin aren't there. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. You are tired. Mm -hmm. It's late. It is late. Somebody pounded on our door and woke me up. Okay. Opened the door and said, put on your life vest. And okay. we swept them off the shelf onto the floor. We had been asleep. Yes. So we said to get above deck. Put on a dress as quickly as I can. Put my daughter's coat on. Put my coat on. I don't grab a hat because we're in a hurry. Okay. Put our life vests on. I hurry out the door. People aren't panicking. They just don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Do you see other people in the hallway? There are other people leaving their rooms. Mm -hmm. One asked me if I felt that shudder, and I say no. I was asleep. I don't know what's happening, and I'm scared. Walk up the stairs, but the gates are closed on the stairwell. People at the front are shouting. 
They're calling for women and children to be let through the gate. And fast clears that I don't want to leave my husband. I tell him I won't leave him. What happens next? He's pushing me forward with my daughter holding her hand. And, and I'm telling him, no, I can't go without you. I can't go without you. They're trying to pull me through the gate. I'm at the front and I'm screaming, no, no, John, I think my husband's name is John. And I'm crying and I'm saying, I'm not going anywhere without you. And finally, they understand that I'm not going without him. And they let me back down the stairs to him with our daughter. We still don't know what's happening. Eventually, they open the gate and we get out, and it's crowded on the deck and it's cold. There's ice all over the deck. People are playing with it. What else? They're calling for women and children again. My husband is trying to convince me that I need to get on a lifeboat take our daughter and I can't let go of his hand but I can't lose him my world is nothing without him what he's telling me I have to save our daughter's life I have to save our daughter's life okay and that finally gets through to me mm -hmm. I can see both floating off Farther side of the ship. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I'm being yanked towards the lifeboat. Okay. I cry out for my husband and I hug him tightly. And he says, I'll see you in the boat. And I believe him. So I get on the lifeboat. My daughter sits in my lap. Okay. You can see my husband looking over the rail of the ship as they lower us down. Bumpy going down. My daughter is cold and I'm crying. And that's the last time I ever see him. From the lifeboats, we watch the ship sink. Describe that to me. Tell me what you see. I see the front of the ship going down pulling the rest of it down with it. It's loud, it's creaking. The angle is so great right now. The steam towers have started to fall. I don't know if my husband is alive or not on a boat. I can't find him on right. the boats and I want to go back and help because we can see people in the water that have jumped off the ship. But they said we can't go back. How many people are in your boat? Um, maybe 50, it's not full. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what else happens? The ship is sprayed up and down in the water. Okay. The electricity is out. The darkest night sky I've ever seen. My man is breaking in half. The top of the boat hits the water hard. The propellers slap down in the bottom of the boat. Sinks rapidly. It pulls the top, the bottom half down. The propellers go straight up in the air. And at that point, I know that if my husband did not get off the ship in a boat, that he's gone. Because nobody can survive that by looking at it. Mm -hmm. And it's too cold outside to survive in the water, even with the life vest. Yes. The ship sinks. 
You can hear people screaming for help. But we don't go to them because the officer in charge of our boat says they'll swamp us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. What else? What happens next? We wait hour. I still don't know if my husband made it or not. Another big ship comes. Tell me what that looks like. A steamer, just like Titanic was. Okay. It's called the Carpathia. Is it daytime now? It's daytime. Mm -hmm. How do you get up to that ship? How do they get you off the lifeboats? Climb a ladder. You have to climb a ladder. And I'm searching frantically. Yes. For my husband, they're taking our name and I'm checking back over and over again to see if he's registered yet. They give us blankets. My daughter begins to cry. So what happens when you when you dock and you arrive? What happens when you get off that ship? Tell me everything that you see and that you're experiencing. I am heartbroken. I never found my husband. Um, my sister is there with her family waiting for us. Yeah, it's your sister. Okay. She heard what happened to the ship. Mm -hmm. And I tell her and John died. What else? What happens next? Where do you go with your sister? Back to her house. Mm -hmm. How do you get there? You walk. It's a long walk. It's a long walk. Mm -hmm. She lives in an apartment in New York City. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and move. Another important day in this lifetime as you move ahead, we're moving ahead further in time in this lifetime that we're looking at. Be there now. Tell me what is happening. I'm in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Machines are beeping. My hair is white. I'm very old. My family is all there. My daughter. Mm -hmm. And her children are there. I didn't remarry. You didn't. This is the last day of your life. Mm -hmm. Not painful. Mm -hmm. I'm unconscious. Yeah. But I can hear what's going on around me. Yes. I know I'm dying. And I'm so excited to see my husband again. Mm -hmm your husband to step forward. He's there. He is there. Mm -hmm. I'm young again. You are. Mm -hmm. and he's been waiting for me all this time. And I don't hurt anymore physically or emotionally. Everything is beautiful. It's green rolling hills, blue sky, wildflowers. And he embraces me and I know I'm home. What does he say to you? He says, I'm so happy to see you. I've been waiting for so long. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I left you, but you did such a good job. I love you. You recognize your husband yeah. as someone in your current life. Mm -hmm. My husband. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 